when I purchased this last remaining farm in the city of Milwaukee, it had three greenhouses, about three acres of land, and that's what it looked like. Then we started to increase uh, uh, our uh, composting. We started growing soil because you see inside cities and even in our rural areas and suburban areas, the soil is contaminated. So we didn't uh, use any digging equipment even today. Uh, with our 25 acres of greenhouses, uh, we don't use any digging equipment. We uh, grow the soil that we use. And we started vermicomposting. And again, these uh, young people are over 30 years of age now. And we started aquaponics. Uh, this is a really important piece of bringing protein into people's lives. And one of the tanks was a weed tank, one was a filter tank, and one was a fish tank that uh, uh, housed about uh, 50 tilapia that you could raise in about uh, six months. And we had a number of those, and it started out as a youth project. And uh, uh, remember that image, because you're going to see how that was engineered into a different system. We also grew a lot of bedding plants. And we used those bedding plants uh, to decorate around the city of Milwaukee and different projects. <clears throat> And I would teach these young people how to uh, grow in the back 40 there, that you'll see a, a change as well. And one of the things I noticed uh, as I worked with these kids, they had really bad reading and writing skills. So after they did something physical, we'd bring them in, and they would have to write about it. And it would lead them to uh, want to dig deeper after they had looked through the microscopes. and. Uh, pulled out samples from, from the worm bins and looked at microorganisms, and their grades improved. And it's something that the schools uh, use today, this idea of hands-on learning that leads to academic excellence. We also um, work with the kids on preserving food, a lost art, and how to use uh, um, tools, basic tools, at an early age. And more people started finding, about, finding out about the work that I was doing with the youth, and we started getting more people coming to uh, growing power. And I also work with the juvenile justice system. Uh, back in those days, uh, uh, some of these kids had uh, been in youth prisons for a number of years and were coming back into society. So I used to bring compost down and put it at their facility, and they would grow food. And uh, as part of their therapy, they would give back this food to Second Harvest Feeding America. So now they're uh, learning to give back. They had taken so much from society. And then we would take uh, organizations like Neighborhood House here, and we would transform uh, this block where they had shrubs and they had a lot of car thieves, uh, car thefts. And um, uh, we would transform this and plant flowers in that island between the street and the sidewalk. And something wonderful happened. All of a sudden, the car thefts went away because people started paying attention looking at the flowers, and I guess the car thieves uh, felt uncomfortable and they uh, uh, went away. We would take these vacant lots where drug dealers would hang out, and we'd bring about 75 yards of compost and flowers, I call these flower explosions, and in one day we would transform, we'd rally the folks in the community and transform a vacant lot uh, into something like this. And again, the drug dealers went away because people started looking at the flowers and it made them uncomfortable. 